So there's been, uh, there's a lot of phrasing around innovation and open, so I thought I would start with a definition uh, that we might use on this panel, because this panel is about science and technology as opposed to culture. So this is a picture of what's called the open innovation process. It's by a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, named Henry Chesborough, who sort of invented the phrase open innovation many years ago. And the idea is that in a traditional technology development system, you have a funnel, and at each stage in the funnel, we actually reduce the number of projects that move through research and development. So if you're Hewlett Packard, uh, only a project that is worth um, 200 million a year, 500 million a year, continues to move through the funnel. So out of a very large number of projects, maybe one or two go to the market. So the idea in open innovation is to cut holes in the funnel so that knowledge can move purposefully out of the organization and into the organization. So that as a project is canceled, it can move out and be developed someplace else, or a new project can move in. And that's really what this, this graph is indicated to look at. And the idea is that essentially one project that might not make sense to Hewlett Packard might make enormous sense to a startup. Or a technology that was created for something like sharing physics data links might turn into the World Wide Web. So and when we talk about open innovation and open access, in many cases, this is what's implicit, but it's good to bring it to the, to the foreground. Now, in science and technology, we have things that go beyond cultural works. So uh, one of my favorite ways to segment the space is to say we have at least three kinds of knowledge products that move around. So we have journals and books, which are the classic way that we share science knowledge. And those would be creative works from a legal perspective. They would fall under Creative Commons copyright licenses. And indeed, the phrase open access relates to the idea that scholarly journals and books should be available on the public internet free of charge and free of all other constraints other than the access to the net itself. But we also have inventions and products and tools and technologies which are not creative works to the law. So we need to think about commons infrastructure that allows the tools and technologies, the inventions and the products to be moved around in many of the same ways that the internet lets us move creative works around. And we also have data and databases, which are an essential part of science and technology knowledge. In many cases, data and databases are the foundation for new knowledge to be created. The analysis of data and databases turns into journal articles. It turns into books. It allows us to test inventions and products. So we need infrastructure for data and databases as well. Um, now here's an example, Joey mentioned briefly um, these deeds that non-lawyers can interpret. So here's an example of what one of these would look like for stem cells. So this is a Creative Commons materials transfer agreement. It's a contract that governs how biological materials get transferred from facility to facility. In much the same way, Creative Commons licenses let you move copyrighted works from one person to another. And as Joey alluded to, we are in the process of creating a set of patent tools. Those have just completed their first public discussion, um, and they're in essentially alpha testing. Uh, but the core idea for the patent licenses is that we should make it easier for patents to become foundational elements of systems without creating that sort of vendor lockup that we just heard about in, in Mike's talk. So you can actually use patents to create zones of freedom instead of zones of exclusion. Or can, you can use patents to basically create broad, non-exclusive licenses to facilitate the inclusion of technologies as standards without locking people in to one thing or another. So that's all I'm going to say, because as the moderator, my job is to get out of the way and help the people on the panel and you interact. But as we go through the panel, I'd like you to remember this idea of open innovation, and in particular the idea that we want the knowledge to move in and out of companies on purpose. That's actually the goal of innovation in many cases, is not to control the knowledge, but to move it in and out in a purposeful way, and in a way that allows for both the sort of open, commons-based innovation to happen in the public sphere, but also for innovation to happen inside the corporate world.